fasting detoxifies you because you've got all these heavy metals in you and toxins. Fasting is the only thing that gets rid of toxins. Number two, it gives your gut a break so that the bacteria in your gut can reset. Because if you're constantly eating those poor bacteria. In the following content, we delve into the thought-provoking insights of Dr. Pradeep Jamnadas, a renowned expert in his field. Dr. Jamnadas is celebrated for his innovative approach and deep understanding of complex medical topics. We will explore his perspectives and analyses, particularly focusing on his unique viewpoints on diet, fasting, and their impacts on health. Join us as we unpack the wisdom and knowledge shared by Dr. Jamnadas, offering valuable lessons for our health and well-being. So why fast? Why, why, why do you want to fast? Because your insulin levels will come down with fasting. If you don't eat, what happens to your insulin levels? They go down, because insulin is only brought on by eating. That's why I make you fast. That's why if you're a patient at CVI, you have to eat only once a day or twice a day. If you're gonna eat twice a day, you start out with that eating, but you must eat in a six hour window. And then no eating the rest of the 18 hours. If you're constantly eating, you're making too much insulin. So you wanna fast so that your insulin levels come down. So then after fasting for 18 or 24 hours, when you then do eat, you're sensitive to insulin. So your pancreas will only make this much insulin with the next meal versus a whole gallon before. So eating in a fasting state produces more insulin than eating in a fed state where you produce a lot of insulin. We are always eating in a fed state. Why are you eating if you just fed? Let me ask you, why are you eating? You just had a meal two, week, two hours ago. Why do you have to eat again? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? You're not hungry? Oh, no, but I have to eat. Why? Because, two things. One, you're a junkie, you're an addict. You're an addict. Just like cocaine, just like heroin, you're an addict. Because that sugar goes to the same part of the brain as dopamine. So it gives you that reward center. So now, you have to have your next high. This is very real, guys. That's why intermittent fasting breaks that habit. How do you make a junkie come off his cocaine? You stick him in a room and don't give him any heroin. That's it, or cocaine. So you gotta do the same thing. You gotta play around with your physiology. You gotta play around with it so you don't become an addict. Otherwise, this is, I gotta eat now. You're not hungry, but you still have to eat. You're a junkie. So that's the biggest problem, why we eat so frequently. Number two is we've been socially indoctrinated to eat. It's time to eat. So I don't have an urge or anything, yeah, and if I don't eat, I'm not gonna get cravings that I gotta go eat, I gotta go eat, go eat. No, but it's just, it's one o'clock, so I gotta go eat. <laughs> now I'm saying, why do you have to do that? Who said you gotta eat three meals a day and two snacks? The food industry said that. You didn't say it, your doctor didn't say it. So I want you all to now have conscious feeding. Conscious feeding. What we commonly told is a total lie. The only time you're supposed to eat every two, three hours is if you're expecting a baby. <laughs> you can't go wrong with it. <laughs> So I always say pregnant women shouldn't be doing this. Of course, they should be eating for their baby, but even then they need to be eating whole foods and right foods. As we've just heard, Dr. Pradip Jamnada shares fascinating insights on the relationship between diet and health, emphasizing the significance of fasting. His approach sheds light on how our eating habits can profoundly affect our well-being. Next, we will continue to explore Dr. Jamnadas's enlightening perspectives. And if you look at the Indian culture, you know, throughout the pregnancy, in different stages of the pregnancy, the grandmothers usually tell them to eat certain types of foods. And there's a lot of intelligence behind it. And you follow some of that intelligence, you'll do very well. But for the rest of us who are not growing like that, no, it's a total lie. It's been made up. It's an old wives tale that you're going to eat lots of small little meals. That was debunked in the 70s, but it's still, you know, all these things are very hard to erase now. But they've been stuck in our psyche for a very long time. But no, 
You are made to feast and fast, feast and fast. Our physiology is made for that. And the, I didn't even talk about ketones and ketogenesis today and when you start making ketones, that's a whole different talk. But basically you're a hybrid machine. You're supposed to be working on gasoline and then diesel, gasoline, then diesel. In this case, you're supposed to be working on glucose and ketones, glucose and ketones. But if you're just on glucose, glucose all the time, then the insulin is just gonna make you store, 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 and the storage never gets used. So you have a nice fat deposit account which never gets used. And that fat deposit is inflammatory. It, there needs to be a turnover of it all the time. So you're supposed to feast and fast feast. That's the machinery you were made for. But we changed it and we only use one kind all the time. So next time go buy a hybrid car and only use gas all the time. You can't do that. That's not the way it's supposed to be used. Fasting detoxifies you because you've got all these heavy metals in you and toxins. Fasting is the only thing that gets rid of toxins. Number two, it gives your gut a break so that the bacteria in your gut can reset. Because if you're constantly eating those poor bacteria, and remember, more than 50% of the nutrients that are floating inside your bloodstream are not what you ate. It's what your bacteria have made, metabolized, and released into your bloodstream. So you need the right bacteria in your gut. To get stem cell mobilization, you really have to do a three-day water fast. So after three days, on the third day when you start eating then, you get a tremendous increase in your stem cells. It usually occurs on day number three. Yeah. Yeah, three day water fast, and then on the third day when you break your fast, your stem cells will go out of control. Really crazy, it's just so wonderful. Because during those three days, something happened called autophagy. Autophagy is in your body where you're recycling all the intracellular organelles. That's a whole lecture I can give you on fasting, the physiology of fasting. That's a separate, that's in my talk that I give. But basically, all those organelles get replaced, right? They get recycled and thrown out of the cells. And the mitochondria also, all the old ones die. Now you need new ones. Three-day water fast every six to seven weeks, you do a three-day water fast. That is the ultimate. I mean, that just gets you the best benefit. If you don't want to get premature dementia, you don't want to get cancer. If you have connective tissue disease, if you have diabetes, three-day water fast. But during those three days, your caveat is you cannot take your diabetes medicine during those three days, otherwise your sugar may drop because you're not taking calories, right? And you mustn't take your blood pressure medications because your, your blood pressure may drop. And just drink lots of water. So during the three days, it's just water, 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 only. that's it. And if you have a physician who is agreeable or understanding, you need to tell them that you're doing a three-day water fast. Because if you start getting cramps on the second day, oh, cramps, that's because you're losing salt and magnesium. So then you take a glass of water, put a pinch of salt in it, and you drink it, your cramps go away. If you're going through withdrawal, he should be able to see that, oh my God, the sugars are fine, but this guy's breaking out and so he's truly a junkie. Slow down. Now you need to, you can't be eating five meals a day and then go do a three-day water fast. You need to condition your body to get into a three-day water fast. So you first start skipping random meals, one day lunch, one day dinner, one day, then go to two meals a day. You do that for three, four weeks. Then go to one meal a day, five days a week. Five days a week, one meal. Then two, three meals on the weekends. You do that for a couple of weeks. Then you say, now my body is ready to do a three-day water fast. As we conclude our journey through Dr. Pradip Jamnadis's insightful perspectives, we take with us a deeper understanding of the intricate relationship between diet, fasting, and overall health. His expertise has illuminated valuable concepts that challenge conventional wisdom and encourage us to rethink our approach to nutrition and wellness. We hope this exploration has been enlightening and inspires you to consider how these ideas might positively impact your own health journey. Thank you for joining us in exploring Dr. Gemnata's revolutionary thoughts.